I'm here at the Fujifilm stand with Andreas to talk about the brand new X100 6, yep. X100 VI. What no, are you calling no, no. it? X100 6. X100 6. So you tell me some of the key improvements in this camera over the previous model, please. So you start with the heart and mind of any camera. Yeah. So the sensor and process have been updated. Of course. So we've now got the 40 megapixel X Trans CMOS 5 sensor and the X Processor 5. Yeah. Um, we have the same much-loved design. It's like a spot the difference competition versus the V. <laughs> but um, we've got our tilt screen, our hybrid viewfinder and all Beautiful. that. So that all stays the same. Um, but for the first time in an X100 series camera, we've got IBIS. Oh, I see. So In-body stabilization, and the body itself hasn't actually changed that much in space. So how do you manage to cram that in? Oh, mate, the wizards in Japan <laughs> managed to do it, so don't ask me. The, the, the lens itself is slightly bigger, okay. and the body itself is slightly bigger, but not big enough so that... You didn't notice access, it. Not that you notice it, or that the accessories from the V don't work. So right, the so case, the exactly same, yeah. same case and everything. Yeah. Is the lens Has the lens been improved? No, it's exactly the same exactly lens. Exactly the same optics. The yeah. It's just a little bit bigger to accommodate the fact that you put iris yeah, yeah, in there yeah. as well. It's like, it's like half, a mil from, yeah, half a mil from the lens and 1.5 mil on the body. But oh, that's if you tiny. hold that's it, tiny. I, I you'll, couldn't you'll tell. actually think, oh. If you didn't tell me, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, it's about yeah. 40 grams heavier because yeah. of that iris system. But again, the balance and everything, it feels premium, feels nice in the hand you can't actually tell that it's heavier than the V. And this has the same sensor as the X-T5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like fully, it's it's got flagship sensor basically. Oh mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. It's got the same incredible. sensor as the X-T5, X-H2. Um, no skimping and saving on, on that front. So um, all the eye tracking and all that, it's exactly the same as the X-T5. Um, you've got all the latest film simulations. You've got Riala Ace for the first time in an X-Series body. So yeah, it's got all the bells and whistles. Beautiful. Now, you've had to increase production yep. on the X100 series of cameras. And why is that? What's been happening with the X100? So I think finally people have woken up to the fact that Fujifilm cameras deliver film-like look yeah. from a digital camera. Yes. So it was about 18 months ago, two years ago now, when, when people first started coming to grips with it. Um, but it's not just the X100 series that's benefited from that. We've seen the X-T30 increase popularity, the X-T5 as well. So um, when we started looking at production, we had to increase production for the X106 to make sure we could try and bridge that gap. But demand has been way ahead of even what we've heard. Predicted. Yes. Yeah. So how much have you had to increase production just to accommodate the crazy demand that you've been experiencing for the X100? So from launch, our production is about 15,000 units a month, and the, the engineers are now looking at how we can increase it even more. Um, we're probably. Uh, four or five months away from being able to take that next leap forward in terms of production capacity, the exact numbers of which I don't know. Okay. But we are looking at ways to bridge that gap between how many we can make now and how many we need to make moving forward. I heard you doubled the production since the last time. Yeah. However, despite the fact that you doubled the production, still sold still out everywhere. Enough. No, no, no. It was yeah. nowhere near enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the people it's, that, a, it's a good problem to have. It's a nice problem to have. The people that ordered it on launch day um, were able to, to get one when we first started delivering from the 28th yeah. of um, February. But no, it's, it's a nice problem to have. But obviously, we'd love to have more cameras, fulfill more orders and what have you. And we are, stock is coming in regularly, silver and black. Um, so like uh, alternate weeks and what have you. But um, yeah, slowly but surely, we'll get there. With compact cameras, over the last five or six years, the whole market took a massive, uh, essentially a dive. I mean, the whole market kind of became non-existent. Smartphones took over in many areas when it came to compact cameras. However, Fujifilm, you've kind of weathered the storm quite a lot, especially with your X100 series camera. And a lot of people would say, and I'd like to know your thoughts on this, but a lot of people will say it's the design of the camera itself, the retro look and feel, and I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah, yeah. camera. So how, how much do you think the aesthetics of the camera play into the demand? I think that, well, you need to remember this, the X100 series has actually been, and it was announced in September 2010. Yeah. So it's, it's well established <clears throat> from a pro photographer perspective. Yeah. You then look at the feature set that the camera can do and you start thinking that actually I can buy an X100 and even if I'm a shooting on a different brand's camera, I don't need a whole series of lenses and stuff like that. Exactly, so yes. This appeals to a huge audience in terms of pros, enthusiasts, amateurs, the design of which um, I think plays a key role because if you get the all black version, it's proper stealth, it's like, yeah. you can't see, that's really retro, really classic. Um, the, I prefer the silver, personally. I prefer the silver yeah. as well. Um, but you get your street photographers who like just want the yes, black because yes. it's like stealth. I think the design plays a key part. And actually, um, when we were recently in Japan, the designer said his ethos was that from three meters, 
he doesn't want people to be able to tell the difference between any of the six cameras. So right. while there are subtle differences, it's only when you get up close that the X100 series has like a DNA throughout mm. that, that plays um, and the X106 just follows that through. I think that that heritage, that look of the camera as well as the look of the the, cam the images out are critical to the success of the X100 series. One of the things that we're finding in terms of the market and how the market's been developing and expanding is the fact that the younger generation are now discovering a lot of these cameras. Yeah. And it's with uh, social media platforms such as TikTok which have essentially you know, uh, skyrocketed the X100 to uh, almost like a legendary status and yeah. loads of people want these cameras but it's a lot of the younger generation so how does that play into like Fujifilm's uh, ethos and marketing strategy have you always uh, you know is this like new to you or have you always uh, targeted the younger generation as well for your cameras or do you have like no particular segment that you focus no, on? No so if you, if you look at the different cameras that we make and you start thinking about the Instax and, and all yeah, of that yeah. the Instax obviously appeals to that teenager up to these sort of like early 20s market yes. and we've always been able to speak to that consumer and what we haven't always done is basically bridge that from Instax into digital as you say the X100 series seems to have basically gone away from just being a photographic product into yes. a lifestyle a sort it's of like more of a cultural, a thing, cultural now, yeah. thing as well and from our perspective what we push more and more is the film simulation because that's what's elevated this camera the the, the fact that you can take film looking images yes. from a digital camera and that's what we push more and more and you can see on our stand we've got behind you yes. or our film simulations and just reiterate to people that we have a 90 year history in knowing how color works yes knowing how color should look knowing how it should be printed yes and, and that's what our marketing strategy is all about and the great thing about this camera is it connects with your digital instax cameras as well so if you're taking pictures on here you can print it directly with your instax cameras on the well. older digital cameras on the older instax um, printers yes but yes on the newer ones which use a slightly different technology we would tra recommend transferring it to your smartphone selecting and then I doing see. it from there so is this not is this no longer compatible with your mo your your current instax cameras so so it was the printers the sp1 the printer, sorry, yes, and 3 yes, yes. Was, were the ones that offered direct printing you also have the um uh, the Instax Mini Evo, which has a printing feature yeah, as well. Yeah, so, so those those work slightly differently. They I work see. on a Bluetooth, not a Wi-Fi system. I see. So it's slightly different, but we would always recommend um, pairing it with the app and then downloading it. You've got a bigger screen to review things yeah. and then printing from your smartphone. Fantastic. It's been great talking to you, Andreas. You Thank too, you so man. much. It's a pleasure. Take care. Take care.